Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. I have a video for you today on a few items that are going to John down in Cypress, Texas. John ordered a sheath for his Essie Zula 2, one of my favorite knives. He also ordered a sheath for his Essie 3, another one of my favorites. And he ordered a holster for his Smith & Wesson 357 Thunder Ranch. So. The holster is by far the most interesting piece of this puzzle, so I'm going to save it for last and kind of take some time to show it to you guys. Um, the knives are a little bit more simple, a little simpler rather. So he'd asked both of the knives, both of the sheaths to be inside the waistband, right hand vertical. And he specifically wanted these soft loops on them, also called tolster loops. Um, he had actually purchased them and sent them to me, had them shipped to me. Uh, as well as the blue gun, in fact. So, um, all right, so let's get into it. For the SC3, uh, both of these sheets are going to be pancake style per his request, which does make it easier to do soft loops. It's easier to do soft loops on a pancake style because you have eyelets going all the way around as opposed to a fold on one side and eyelets on the other. Uh, I do have methods for making it work. So if you do want something in a taco style with soft loops in that particular configuration, I can do that for you. Uh, just let me know. Um, I do prefer taco over pancake because it's structurally a little bit stronger. I find it a little bit easier to work with and I like the look of it more. But these came out really nice. I'm happy with them. And uh, I guess let's get into the meat and potatoes here. So obviously we have OD green for the primary color on the sheath and we have coyote brown as a reinforcement plate on it. We have coyote brown uh, Tulsa loops here, which obviously the match is not quite perfect. Almost makes it look more like a desert tan, but the colors do work really well together. Still get that really nice military camo effect there. And then uh, it matches nicely against, this is a coyote brown blade from Essie. And then he's got the knife connection scales on there. I'm not actually sure which color these are, this is like a charcoal, I want to say. It's not quite black, and it's got these beautiful blood red liners on it. I just, the color combo with all this stuff together is really superb. I'm a big fan. Um, obviously, you can hear it's got a good click going in. There's no rattle, no play. The knife's not going to fall out. You've got a ballistic one handed draw, and the action is smooth on the way in and out of the sheath, uh, which I find extremely gratifying it's very important in my opinion to have that uh, that smooth action on the way in because sometimes you see sheaths that are cut to have like you know a lot of retention but not necessarily good retention and so it's difficult to draw out but you can draw it out by just doing a grip and rip kind of thing using your knife in an emergency whatever that's fine but then going back in you have to like brace the sheath and really slam them together and that's just not in my opinion that's just not good it's not practical it's not artistic and it's just I don't know there's something missing in it for me so having action where you can feel the smoothness of it coming in and out of the sheath I really appreciate that that kind of draw so that's how I build mine uh, same thing with the Zula 2 you've got a pancake style sheath and smooth action in and out of the sheath. Uh, one of the things about the Azula, typically, oops, typically you have to mold for retention just under here, right before the finger troil, this nub here on the blade stock. Um, the reason is because you get essentially negative contour on the handles. There's nothing really to grip onto. You don't see it swell out the same way that like an SE3, most knives have some kind of swell here, uh, finger, you know, finger grooving, whatever, before the Ricasso. And that makes it easy to grip onto because, you know, with negative contour, it's only getting wider as you go outward, so it wants to fall out of the sheath, which is why you have to grip onto the blade stock, and that's not necessarily ideal because it can create wear marks over time won't damage your knife but it'll create wear marks which does lower the the sale and trade value obviously so uh, with that it does have the, the knife connection scales do have a little bit of that kind of coke bottle shape which helps and then with pancake style 
pancake, which I still don't prefer, but this is one leg up that I'll, this is one concession I'll give pancake over taco, is that uh, it's a little easier to work the top of the sheath above the handle and kind of pinch it down, you know, heat it up and pinch it to slightly smaller, making this tunnel ultimately slightly smaller. It pushes the knife down into that finger groove. So, you know, essentially it's putting pressure this way on the knife and creating that little bit of extra retention so maybe it doesn't wear the knife out so fast or the, uh, the coating off that little groove there and you still get excellent smooth retention on it. So I'm really happy with how that came out. Uh, I'm happy with especially having done it as a pancake style. This is the first time I've done an Azula in a pancake style. I always do taco. Uh, but I'm really pleased with the results. All right, let's talk about this holster because this is, I think, the more exciting part of this video. You guys see a lot of knives on my channel. Uh, you don't see too many holsters and you certainly don't see many creative holsters. You see a lot of kind of standard inside the waistband uh, quality stuff, but it's not, it's not exciting. It's not, you know, whatever. Uh, so this one, he had specifically purchased these Vetter outside the waistband pancake wing. I can't remember what they're called. Pancake loops or wings or something like that. Uh, but he's had them sent to me and he asked me if I could cut the holster, make sure it's cut for whatever his site was. It's a something venom site. I think, uh, he'd sent me pictures of it on the gun. He's got a Picatinny up here and this big sight. It's like a reflex sight or something. Uh, but the, so that's why I had to cut the holster really low here. So I, I know that this is pretty high for an outside the waistband holster. This rides really high. I'm not pleased about that part of it, but it is just a natural byproduct. It had to go that way uh, just based on the types of belt loops and cutting to account for that sight. So there's no way around that that I can think of other than making the holster obnoxiously wide, like the size of a phone book, and having a groove cut out for your, and that just doesn't look good, it just, I don't know. So anyway, this is where it is. Uh, I think it works well. It looks a little bit goofy, but I think on, you know, when you're wearing it, it's gonna suck nice and tight to your body and give you a good uh, a good holster option. So obviously I've cut the groove really low on the cylinder to account for the sight and then I swept back up here to protect the trigger. <sighs> Excuse me guys. Uh, I just can't get away with it. Um, you do have a split bottom here with spacers in it so that you can tighten or loosen these two screws to change the retention to match how you like it. It's right about where I would have it now. The one thing um, John, well and everybody else out there, but John especially is the owner of this, uh, you need to know that with blue guns, sometimes things come out slightly off. Uh, blue guns are not, I mean they're supposed to be a perfect one for one replica, but sometimes they're, sometimes they miss the mark a little bit. So if you have any issues with tight spots or anything like that, Try to just work with these two retention screws first, but if you can't figure it out, or if it doesn't, if it's apparent that there's just something else wrong, uh, just get in touch, we'll figure it out. Uh, I can either coach you through fixing it, or you can send it to me and I'll fix it for free. Uh, that's just kind of one of the disclaimers. Anytime you do something with a blue gun molded holster, it might not be absolutely perfect. So uh, anyway, it feels really nice with the blue gun right now, and I like where the retention's at, so. Uh, very little rattle, very little play. Now the exciting part for this is that this is a convertible holster. You see some manufactured stuff like Alien Gear's got some stuff that basically is like Bumblebee from Transformers can just turn into a hot rod if you needed to. Uh, but this one you can actually take these pancake loops off and mount a plate that carries a harness. So this is actually going to double as a chest rig. So let's do the conversion right here on camera so you guys can see it happen. And uh, I'll show you what you need to make that work. First thing I'm going to tell you is it does take a few minutes. So this is not something that you'd probably end up doing much or at all out in the field. This is something you do to prep to go out. Um, I wish I could come up with something a little... You know, maybe there are ways. I'm kind of thinking of something now. but. Um, 
at least for the project that we had discussed, uh, there is not really any way I can think of to quickly transition this into a chest rig. Uh, I'm kind of thinking maybe in the future I'll try something where I do like my breakaway style thing where you just wear the chest holster and then when you need to you can plug this in or something along those lines. I don't know. Maybe that's just kind of redundant since you'd already be wearing a chest. Shut up! <laughs> I know somebody out there is just like, what are you smoking, dude? Anyway, uh, I'm going to show you the transition here. So it does take a couple minutes and one thing that is kind of a pain in the butt is that the spacers that are necessary for the plate to clear the cylinder are a bit much so it's kind of hard to work with <sighs> mm. however I do give you the proper hardware to deal with it so um, yeah all right without further jaw jack I'm just going to show you so go ahead and take off Use your screw gun or whatever you got to take off the pancake loops. Alright, now I'm going to tell you as I go so that we can make sure that this is all squared away and just good to go. The eyelets right here, the ones that actually have brass eyelets in them, are going to get three quarter inch, or sorry, these are three eighths inch, you get three eighths inch, the shorter of the Chicago screws. Right, so I'm going to put them through the loop that you'll use for that particular orientation. Um, so this transition process is going to take a little bit longer because I'm doing this, but I want I just want your stuff to stay in the right spot and make it a little easier to use when it gets to you because I'm going to ship it with the, uh, the chest rig attached to it. All right, so that's all set. That's good to go. All right, and then because it's wider, having the spacers for retention on the other side of it, I'm giving you half inch Chicago screws. Try to keep this all in frame, not that it's particularly exciting, but at least you guys know what I'm doing. So I just look like a goofball. I mean, I definitely am a goofball, but you know what I'm saying. I can't thread this stupid screw. Come on. Come on. Alright, maybe I need the screw again. I think I got a bunch of them on my desk already. There we go. Backup has arrived. Okay, so your loops are good to go. Sorry for taking this extra time to do it. Um, and now this chest rig, I know this looks pretty funky. It's all gnarly right now. But essentially, it's just a plate with some milled slots in it. And they are in the right direction to help you carry your gun. Uh, at the angle that you desire. So I've got the hardware embedded. I would recommend storing it this way as well so that you all you have to do is take these screws out just hold the plate nice and careful so you don't drop anything and then put your holster on top of it put the screws back through and bam you're done. So let me see if I can do this balancing it all. <laughs> Attempt number one fail. Like I said, it's not, this is not the most convenient transition, so bear with me through it. I, I do understand that. But ultimately, I think you guys are going to like this holster because it is pretty cool. Alright, so you just orient it the way you want. And then you're going to drop the screws back through. 
Maybe. Why is that not going? Oh, uh, I see. Yeah, I messed up. I let my. There you go. I let one of my retention spacers slip out of there. Okay. Just got that. That. And that. Okay. And now we're just going to tighten them down. Once you have them in like this, it's pretty easy to, to do the rest. Okay, those guys are in. Top is in. All right, and you can see what I mean here. We are, we are touching the cylinder enclosure now. So, no, <laughs> I misspeak. That is not an enclosure since it barely touches the cylinder, but you get what I mean. You're touching the part of the holster that covers that little bit of cylinder. Uh, and the reason why it's important to clear that is because the pressure that you're putting against it squeezes your holster. It squeezes it shut and that creates more retention, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but you, I don't want the retention to be on the canister, on the cylinder itself, first off, and second off, you have two designated attention readjust attention you have two designated retention adjustment points already so you don't need to add an unexpected one or an accidental one or whatever uh, alright so check the fit you probably just want to try tightening down the ones that are actually designed for retention adjustment Maybe, maybe you do just a little bit up here. All right, so I'm, I'm liking where the retention is. Just cinch it down a tiny bit more. Um, one thing is you do have to adjust it more, like there's more turns per unit of force exerted on this for retention because you are also going through another set of spacers. So uh, don't, yeah, and, and it will also, also be kind of hitting that cylinder thing. So uh, the retention adjustment when it's outside the waistband is going to feel slightly different than the adjustment for the harness. Uh, that said, all right, we're now adjusted. We've got our harness plugged into it or attached or whatever. Um, it's very easy to use this. You got to twist it around. Giving you a quick look at what I've made here. Um, the plate that connects to the holster has three milled slots in it. It's got these two which are your chest strap. They go around your chest and then this one which is vertical ish. It's at a diagonal for your shoulder. Alright, and then on the back of it I have this other plate that I've made with four milled slots in it. Again, the chest strap and this is the shoulder strap and it's just a junction point that allows both straps to be connected to the same spot. So what I recommend is you figure out where, you know, what tightness you like your shoulder strap at first. Put that on that's going to determine your ride height ultimately. Um, so figure out where you like that and then just kind of leave it. You don't really need to adjust it unless you do uh, something with the angle or if you are trying to do, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, if you add like cold weather gear or something you need the, the actual harness to be bigger then obviously you would adjust it that you know inch or so that you need. Um, the chest strap it's kind of fixed on this thing, so you've got it. Oops, apparently I gotta adjust this a little bit too. Not in the world. There we go. 
So everything is slidable, adjustable, um, which can be really great. It can also be kind of annoying if you have it in the wrong spot and you need to adjust it. You probably have to take the rig off. It doesn't work too well to try to adjust things while it's on you. Uh, but you can see this is the only buckle that you need to really worry about. Uh, some of the other chest holsters out there. Um, sorry, my, I recorded the video once and it kind of got cut off toward the end, so I'm redoing the video for you. I can't remember if I'd said. There's, there are a couple other well-known ones out there like the Kanai and the QLH, I think it's called, or QLC or something. Um, but this varies a little bit from those. If I've already said this in the video, I apologize. I don't think I have. Uh, I think that was in the first one. Uh, basically, you know, the Kanai only has like brass eye, one brass eyelet per strap, and there's three straps coming off of it. That to me seems like a really bad idea because brass is soft metal. It can be very easily bent or broken. Um, so I would, at the least, if you're going to have one of those, put a Chicago screw through it so you can reinforce it and just protect your, your investment. Um, QLH holsters, I really think those are a great design. Um, they have like a wide piece of kydex folded up over that clamps onto the side like you fit it over and then put chicago screws through it that's a very strong design um and then this one i kind of wanted something similar to the qlh but ultimately i, I wasn't going to be able to do it to make it convertible so i just made this plate instead now the thing about the plate i think that makes it great is that you can you can slide this and you can adjust it to wherever you want which subsequently is gonna change uh, the angle. It's gonna give you a little bit of versatility. One of the coolest things about this that was basically unintentional, uh, here I'll show you what you can do with this. I'm really excited about this feature. So let's see, easiest way to adjust the All right, bear with me, guys. If you add a little bit of length, all right, stretch out the shoulder a little bit. Obviously, this is gonna affect ride height. I think I actually kind of like it a little better up high, but um, it just feels a little more secure to me. But check this out. So you've got your chest holster, it's feeling good, whatever. Now all of a sudden you slide it over and you've got yourself more like a cop shoulder holster. And I know the chest strap kind of <laughs> kind of takes away from it a little bit, but if you do want a holster in that position, you can do that and it works very well. So, Kydex shoulder holster. You might have to work with the straps a little bit. It's not quite where I actually like it as far as the tension goes, but uh, but you get the point. Like you can you can pretty easily transition into a completely different style of carry. Uh, so I'm really happy with this. This was not something that we had discussed or planned on. It just kind of works that way. Uh, so I'm really happy with that kind of byproduct. Now the slide. On the back here, let's see. Maybe I can move it while it's on me. It's really tough to. Yeah, it's just a little bit too much of a pain to do it. But um, you definitely want to mess around with what position you like things at. See what works best for your body type. I left a lot of excess on both the shoulder and the chest strap so that you can adjust it to your body john and uh, obviously for anybody else who's thinking about ordering something like this you have that option so i'm very happy with how this came out uh, i'd love to know your thoughts on it if you guys have any experience with chest rigs especially in the holster world i would love you to weigh in and tell me what differences you see between this and what else is out there that you've used and uh, you know pros and cons your user feedback or uh, even just viewer feedback uh, gives me a lot to work with. I mean, you guys are the ones that are out there using this stuff daily. I build it, I wear holsters, I wear sheets, and uh, I know what I like, but what I like isn't necessarily what the whole community likes. I know that, that's why I do custom work, and I really want to uh, 
just keep honing my craft until I have, well, I never want to stop learning and I never want to stop, uh, you know, fine tuning things, but I really like to stay kind of current with what everybody really likes. So obviously I can provide a product that will interest more people so that I can provide a good product. I can make more money, whatever it is, but, uh, I really appreciate and rely on your user feedback. So for sure, let me know what you think of this and uh, how it compares to anything else out there that you've seen or used, especially if you've personally used it. I would love your, your input. So, all right, guys, I've beat a dead horse. Don't wear an apron with this. It'll snag on the holster. <clears throat> beat a dead horse here, but if you like these sheets, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you like the channel, I ask you to subscribe to it if you haven't already done so. And uh, comments down below, let me know what you think of all this gear. I appreciate you sticking around for 26 minutes of rambling. And I uh, hope you tune in for the next one. God bless, guys.